faculty members and my dear uh, students. My name is uh, Chetan Jairam Shirnali. I'm a partner at uh, Co-Create. Uh, you know, the concept of venture capital, capitalism started with uh, the shipping industry, right? So this is as old as uh, insurance uh, industry. And uh, one of the first VCs, today also, by the way, today also they are present. Apparently, they are one of the largest uh, private equity firms called uh, KKR. They also have uh, an Indian entity which has funded uh, tens of billions of dollars into a lot of uh, established uh, businesses. Just to give you a quick background about uh, Co-Create, rather, you know, a quick background about myself. I've been a full-time uh, VC for uh, close to a decade now. Spent about a decade in the uh, financial services industry, then got into consulting. Right? I used to work with a company called uh, International Resources. I used to be their uh, CEO for India, then became the uh, you know, APAC head for uh, the region, then I was leading one of the practices globally for mergers and acquisitions. That's where, you know, we were looking at acquiring, uh, uh, you know, some of the large hospitals in India, hospitals and clinics in India. That's where I kind of got bitten by the startup job. Right? I, uh, you know, I was not fortunate enough, like you guys, to, you know, start my entrepreneurial journey at the age of maybe late, uh, you know, teenage or early 20s. I started my entrepreneurial journey at the age of 40. Right, and uh, it's not an easy uh, call to become an entrepreneur at the age of 40, right? especially when you have commitment, when you have young children. I think uh, you know this is probably the best time to become an entrepreneur, right? I'm sure uh, many of you are in uh, third sem, fifth sem, and all, right? How many of you would want to become entrepreneurs here? I'm sure uh, you all would want to know about. Uh, right, if I give you money, what would you do? Say, for example, in co-create, you know, we normally give uh, up to one and a half crores to each of the startups, right? I'm sure uh, Shashank and team will uh, throw more light on that. So if I give you one and a half crores, what would you do? Uh, with about uh, 12 and a half crores of investment, they have clocked the revenues of over uh, 500 crores and still clocking revenues, right? So now uh, they raise in other languages as well. But just to go back to the you know, genesis of uh, co-create, Right? If you look at uh, you know, companies like uh, Google or Microsoft, Qualcomm, right? they all started as uh, student startups or campus startups. Right? And today, they are all headed by individuals. And this concept of incubation or acceleration is not even in there. Right? Uh, many of the institutions, uh, you know, be it IITs of the world or any of the tier one colleges or even some of the best uh, science and technology universities or uh, B schools, They've been having this incubation for uh, decades together now. Unfortunately, you don't get to see a single student startup in any of those incubations. Outsiders come and uh, they take only the support of students as maybe at most as uh, interns, not beyond that. Right? We also, by the way, we also welcome uh, internship. So that's where you know you will get your first exposure to startups or uh, uh, you know, uh, or probably the first step of your uh, entrepreneurial uh, journey. Right? And at Co-Create, our investment thesis, we are a SEBI approved uh, AIF fund where uh, we have raised some amount and we'll be raising another 100 crores uh, in the near future. And we invest only in student startups. Our fund is called RM Fund 1 and our scheme is called Create on Campus. So imagine, you know, we have put in our own money into this, we have raised money from uh, some of the reputed LPs like uh, Prashant Prakash who is considered to be the father of uh, UH VC in India, right? He also happens to be the Chief Innovation Officer for uh, Government of Karnataka. He's the anchor for this. And we have some marquee names as uh, Ravindra Krishnapa from uh, Erasmic to July. And uh, he was also the head of Oracle in India. He also has come on board as uh, an advisor to us. So imagine the seriousness. So we are going to invest 100 crores in next one year into students' time. So this is how we are uh, very, very serious about uh, this business, right? We believe in this. See, initially, uh, you know, I've been an LP with at least uh, four large firms in uh, India, right? I've been, uh, I know, totally engrossed into this uh, startup ecosystem for the last uh, 10 years as an angel investor and uh, an investment banker as well, right? And uh, I had my own apprehensions uh, before uh, becoming a part of uh, co-create ventures, of course, uh, Suresh started this venture about uh, a year and a half back and I joined full time uh, seven months ago. Prior to that, I've been kind of on and off, but uh, initially I also had my own apprehensions. Will students be able to crack this uh, startup puzzle? The answer is pretty much yes. 
you want to hear it from uh, the horse's mouth. We have a uh, lot of happening uh, entrepreneurs out here. So they are going to throw more uh, light on this. And I was also involved in uh, qualifying companies for uh, Shark Tank both uh, last year as well as the current uh, season uh, through another uh, network called uh, Venture Catalyst. Trust me, 80% of the applications, I repeat, 80% of the applications, the applicants were in the age group of 18 to 20. Right? And uh, we have a good uh, uh, Bharat story, uh, whatever, uh, you know, is good, whatever is happening globally in terms of uh, the recession or uh, the funding winter, right? India is going to shine. And, uh, you know, this is the generation which is going to contribute a lot to our uh, economic uh, growth. So I'll uh, stop here. Any questions, I'm going to be around for uh, some more time. So now I would, I would let all our uh, entrepreneurs uh, speak because it should always come from uh, the horse's mouth. So I would uh, hand over the podium to Shashan. Thank you everyone. Thanks for listening. Any questions, I'm going to be around for some time. So happy to network with you all. Thank you and have a wonderful day. So essentially that's what we do on Health Coach because we help with people to form teams, especially in the university and the campuses. Right now, none of you guys know as to how you can collaborate with another person. If you want to build your own startup, how do you go ahead and build your own startup? How, who are the right people for you to find within your own university and start building things with? That is what we go ahead and help with and um, would love to shed more light on it later on. So anyway, uh, welcome to the entire panel here. And, uh, thanks for uh, giving, I suppose, all the uh, time for all of these awesome students. So you know, I'd like to start off with one major question. Right? Why entrepreneurship? That was probably the first thing that, you know, all of you guys might be questioning and asking us, why did you not sit for placements, right? What did you get for placements if you did sit for it, right? And uh, why entrepreneurship and why now, right? Uh, hello, everybody. My name is uh, Nitin Kedig and I'm the co-founder of uh, Certified Technologies Private Limited. So what my company basically does is uh, we provide skill-based evaluations, uh, you know, for, to help companies hire the right candidates so that... Uh, you don't hire people based on just uh, screening their resumes and you know uh, making them go through a process of interviews. Instead, we will uh, provide such a platform that uh, can help students prove that they are skilled in a particular aspect of the job role, and the company can uh, prove that uh, you know will get proof that the candidate is uh, very you know well fit for the job role. And also we help uh, university students uh, evaluate their uh, job readiness. So, you know, we give them uh, pre-assessment tests that uh, will be curated by the companies themselves so that the student can uh, kind of, you know, uh, take tests that, uh, you know, are curated by the dream company of their dream company that they aspire to be in. And uh, we help them uh, get placed on the campus. Honestly, um, I was given an opportunity to become an entrepreneur considering my uh, tech value, right? So he asked me why entrepreneurship and not placements. According to me, entrepreneurship, you know, has uh, a lot more than what just a normal company can offer you. When you're an entrepreneur, you, you know, you can uh, uh, try and improve on various aspects of so many fields of jobs, you know, you're not just working on one specific job or, uh, you know, going to the same place, doing the same thing with no adventure, you know, I would call it adventure because uh, entrepreneurship, entrepreneurship gives you adventure because you will have to solve so many problems that you wouldn't have otherwise be, uh, you know, been solving when you would have been working in a normal company. You would have, you know, seniors above you and um, they would just guide you in one path and you you know you don't have any room to just go off that track so when you're an entrepreneur you are the leader of yourself you're the no you are your boss you're your own boss so i will get to decide how my company runs and what to work on some new you know some of the new features that can come into my company some of the most innovative things that i can impart into my company right into my uh, product so that is why I chose entrepreneurship. So also, you know, entrepreneurship, even if in the short term it is not, you know, you might feel that, you know, your friends are getting, uh, you know, good salary packages and you have a much lesser income. But in the long run, if you are, you know, if the business goes very well, I'm pretty sure you will be, you know, the person who is going to be on top of everybody and, you know, you are in a position to give them jobs. So, you know, that is one beautiful aspect of entrepreneurship. Uh, and Shrikal basically, um, 
uh, founder of FizzyFit. Uh, FizzyFit is basically to summarize this a uh, computer vision enabled digital therapeutics platform uh, with the goal of accelerating patient rehabilitation. Uh, so, uh, founding story or you can say what we're trying to do specifically is that you would have seen a lot of people undergo surgeries uh, and they have to undergo something specifically called post-operative rehabilitation. You would have seen people having ACL ligament tears, fractures, then converted into surgeries, but you people do not go back and live their own life. You would have seen people complaining that they've not recovered, they've not uh, you know, living the foolish life, what the doctor or the physiotherapist had promised. So we have a computer vision platform uh, where we connect both the doctors, <laughs> physiotherapists, radiologists, orthopedic surgeons and the patient uh, to ensure there's a continuous monitoring service uh, over the period of time, right? So one thing important in healthcare is healthcare in India is getting more and more costlier uh, for the same reason that top doctors are always going to charge the top thing, but you do not get necessary appointments with them. So we built this uh, really effective platform where even at your home, we can monitor your progress and we just give them the insights to the doctor and he takes that as an, uh, you know, as a tool or as a su suggestive uh, method uh, to improve the clinical outcomes of patients. Um, specifically to why entrepreneurship. So this out of like more like a personal uh, story of, I was a cricket player, I used to play for Karnataka and stuff uh, and had an injury, a ligament tear. A uh, couple of my founders as well, or as well as their parents, you know, who had injuries as well. And we were all classmates, you know, just sitting and uh, attending hackathons and, you know, doing that. And one interesting problem which we thought was um, movement health in general. But why entrepreneurship is because we were not worried about this whole, uh, coming from healthcare, you really cannot have a very glamorous life, to be honest, uh, straight away. It's more about the caregiving aspect, right? It's more about the what you're trying to do good for the society. So it started off that, that how can we start solving this problem? We have the technology in hands. Uh, we can always go approach doctors. How can we combine? And India is really known for its healthcare, but it's not distributed to many people. It's not distributed beyond Bangalore. If you go to the tier two or tier three cities. So that's where what we felt as founders uh, representing my team here is that um, it was leveraging that we do not have this hierarchy. I don't need to go and ask someone to do what should I do to solve this problem. We were very, very problem focused. We said that we have to solve this space. Uh, we saw a lot of other companies which were just trying to hit around the bush, but they were not solving this particular problem, right? Uh, and we saw that there's no obstacles for us. That's the beauty of entrepreneurship, right? You are like uh, Ritin mentioned, there's no one to, you don't have to report to anyone, you don't have to. As long as you're solving the problem, giving the value to that particular customer or patient in our case, uh, you're doing great. Uh, so it started off as that as a motive uh, coming right now after one year of uh, complete development. I feel it's very enriching to see that people using your products, your ideas, your creativity, and as an entrepreneur, you experience a full circle. You're into design, you're into engineering, you're into product management, you're into uh, people management, right? And I bet, I tell me at your age, that is our age, that is 21, 22, who else is doing this, right? Uh, everyone else would just go and take up a normal job, which is completely fine, but you cannot grow 5x in that. You can't go 50x in that. So I feel, uh, I can see more maturity among my own fellow entrepreneurs itself in the way we are thinking just one year into this. Uh, so that's what I would give as my biggest takeaway from this. Hey guys, my, my name is Sachin and uh, I'm a founding engineer at Consumer. Consumer is a powerful AI tool that is a market intelligence platform. We procure data from the internet. There's a lot of data on the internet, but just data on the internet doesn't make sense. So we help businesses and any products to make sense of the data. We help them identify their strong points, their strengths, pain points, granular based micro level insights and any trends that are going on the going on in the marketplace as well. So that is basically what consumer does. And coming to why entrepreneurship? So entrepreneurship like it starts off from a ground zero level. You get to build an organization, you get to work on things and you see those results immediately. In a big company, in corporate world, you make one change in your code base or anything like that, it goes through like six or seven rounds of reviews and uh, checks and uh, so on. And it will sometimes take two, three months for you to see that change. But what excites me is the changes I make or changes like in what we do in our company in entrepreneurship is reflected immediately. It is very rewarding 
growth is really quick. It's like five times of fifty times, like Shrika was saying. Yeah, it's adventure. It's fun, and you get to see a whole new perspective of things. Hey everyone, I'm Ananya. Uh, Ananya Mugara, and these are my co-founders. You guys can lift your hands. <laughs> yeah. So uh, we are building Smart Chakra. Smart Chakra is a startup in the automotive space. But a disclaimer: it's a startup in the automotive space. But I'm a computer science engineer, so it's a multidisciplinary startup. And um, to answer your question first, why entrepreneurship? The reason why. Smart Chakra was born in the first place was because of a personal story. So I met with an accident with my family, and it was very bad. We fought the battle of life and death then, and that was when I made up my mind that I don't want anybody else to go through the same issue that I went through, and the struggle that we went through shouldn't be felt by anyone else. So that was more to do with passion to build something that entrepreneurship came up. Whatever they've said, everything is true. You learn, you do a lot of things. It's adventurous. The reward, it, everything is very rewarding. You learn a lot. A lot of things that you can't do in a nine-to-five job, probably you do ten times more. It is strenuous. It is a period of struggle, but the rewards for it, the outcomes for it, are much more um, happier because you have put in the effort. You are the one who's struggling to make things happen. It's not a fruitful journey, but it's a bouncy ride which gives you happiness. Because the end of it, you actually smile that I worked through all of it and I was able to get through this. So whatever they said is absolutely true. Um, but at the same time, one thing that I I think every panel discussion, one thing I stand on very strongly is you need to have the passion to build it. Because a lot of times I know there's this common phrase and statement that 99% startups fail, only 1% of them succeed, and then 1% of them succeed only because. You have the determination and passion, and the um, enthusiasm to build something and make that change in the world. Not just for money, but for the satisfaction that you actually build something successful. So that's what I would have to say. Hey guys, uh, I'm Rahul. I'm the founder, co-founder of Abaya. Abaya is a cybersecurity startup. So what we do in Abaya is basically, you know, we try to help <coughs> other uh, small and medium businesses or startups like them, you know, focus on their business. You know, while we help them, you know, ensure their sec the site or that any kind of product, you know, is secure. So this is the whole idea of cyber security. I mean, if Abaya and you know, you guys can come back and talk to me. And why entrepreneurship again? I mean, the guys have already given all the points <laughs> now. So I would say, uh, in including with all the points, uh, entrepreneurship is one thing where you know you would you do good things every day. Or you know you do so many things in one day. Like probably you know if you have like a nine to five job, you would go there, you know, fill some Excel sheets, and then you come back home. But here it's like you know you do so many things. Like you you work on your product, you work on you know your pitch decks, or you work on your uh, you know how do how do I strategize my you know business you know in in a way to market or do the sales and you know how do I get it, get my uh, product into the market right? So you do a lot of things in one day, and you know um, this is this is really fun actually. And uh, you know, sometimes you know you you tend to fail on most of the things, and that's really good because then you you learn what you do, right? So uh, I would say uh, being an entrepreneur is is very very you know it's uh, adventures like they said, and it's 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 very fun. Uh, we are building a decentralized application that provides financial services like lending and borrowing with zero collateral crypto loans. The reason that we are building is, let's say, if you want to take a loan in uh, In this uh, real world, yeah. Uh, what you do? You go to bank and uh, you ask for a loan. They will ask for some mortgage or your house or your car, anything. They will ask for a mortgage and they will give you a loan. But in a decentralized finance world, meaning only where the cryptocurrencies work, you can't take a loan directly without uh, by giving your uh, house or anything because the decentralized finance world is full of anonymous people. You won't get to know what the uh, personal information of the user. So what's currently happening in the De in the DeFi world is that if you want to take a loan, you will have to pay over collateralized. Uh, you if you want to take a loan, you will get a over collateralized loan. Meaning, if you want to take one hundred dollars worth of a loan, you have to give two hundred dollars worth of collateral, collateral, two hundred dollars worth of money as a collateral. The problem comes like if you already have a one two hundred dollars of worth of money, why you do take a hundred dollars of uh, 
I call a loan as a loan again. That's the problem that we are trying to solve in Zero. Uh, we are trying to provide under collateralized loans without doing any collateral. Women entrepreneur building mechanical based stuff, being a computer science guy, you won't get this anywhere, anywhere else. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, yeah, no, yeah. <laughs> yeah, so um, for me it was time management, right? Oh, no. So okay. I start off my day, so we had classes I think till 3.30, 3.30 and from 3.30 till 8.39 I was in college. So I think for me it was the kind of support that I had received from my parents and that was the same for her. So she's an electronics engineer doing an automobile startup with me, right? So. Um, Time management is something that you have to keep in track. So sometimes you will have to work a lot more on the company. Sometimes you have an assignment, it's taking way too long, I'm not able to find the answers for. So the things that you need to do in the startup are going to get pushed. So I wake up earlier to finish it. This was on 13th floor, I mean, we, that's where our canteen is. So we were having uh, a cup of tea and we were just discussing about, okay, let's try doing this. Suddenly we were like, okay, let's do this completely different of what Smart Chakra is doing. We went down to Surya, so we already faced a rejection, right? One round of rejection done. So then we went to Surya sir and then we were like, sir, uh, we have this idea, he said, oh, this is so cool, let's do it. And then we reached out to him because he's in the automobile field and we kind of trust each other with what we are building and things like that and that's how the team was formed. So it was a very casual conversation, our vision aligned and I think as you keep working on something, your vision just becomes clearer and clearer. So even if you don't have a vision when you start off, see for me it was passion, right, because I went through a very tough time when I met with the accident. But for them, they were able to align with the vision I was looking at and try to build something to be able to save more people's lives. That's one aspect of it. That's a social cost. Yeah, apart from that, you make money also. But yeah, the, the social aspect of it is where we actually save lives. I feel that, you know, I should have gone with these children <laughs> and I should have joined being with you. And this is a wonderful kind of uh, situation where you have best of both. In fact, I really love the way they are presenting. That itself is one of the very important qualities. How do you communicate your ideas to others so that they are, they come to your pitch? That's very important. In fact, uh, as someone was asking about passion. In fact, uh, you have to discuss passion within you. Every one of us will have passion in one or the other place, other place. We need to discuss what is it about. Only that passion can keep you alive for a long time. Am I right or not? You may not be able to search for that outside. It is within you. And somebody asked about time. 24 hours you have. <laughs> 8 hours for college, 16 hours for home. Somebody talked about book. Yes, you need book just to relax a bit when you are in the journey of entrepreneurship. Thank you very much. See you. Kind of uh, energy levels or the passion from uh, faculty members which I have seen in BMSIT I have interacted with uh, many of you ma'am so it's really you know hats off and uh, this is truly from uh, I have a lot to learn from them first of all because no, we need to change the mindset of others to help them come up because we are all old timers we never had anything called as entrepreneurship even if there were to be even, not even one person not even one person forget about it and she was talking about the challenges uh, at home uh, fortunately, I am one such parent. <laughs> I am also selling the same board, sir. And, uh, it's really, really a big task to actually hold the children as entrepreneurs at home. It's not so easy. Uh, you will get to know that in case if you get into this kind of a journey. Am I right? That's the kind of a thing. In fact, uh, all that you require is to keep your eyes and ears open all the time. 24 hours, 365 days. There will be million problems around you to solve. Many people would have seen and gone just like that, noticing it, not without noticing it. But if you are curious enough, if you are really, really concerned about somebody's problem, that is the nail on which you have to hit. Okay, once that is done, perseverance becomes an issue. Everybody gets an idea. Immediately they put it onto the mobile phone so that they don't forget it. But hardly they realize that. Simply because that kind of a perseverance or passion is missing. And you have to discover your passion. Make sure that you are on a journey which is completely uncertain in nature, at least for a while. And you will not be entertained or probably motivated by so many people. In fact, motivation can never come from outside. It has to be found within you. That is self-motivation. Don't expect that I, am, I got motivation from him, I got motivation. No, 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 no. Search for motivation within you and that will only be keeping you alive for all this entire journey. I think most of these people would have done the same thing and they are successful today. 
Thank you very much. See you later.